This is Maggie Elbrow, and I'm a research librarian at Clemson University. I'm here today for day two of our Research Impact Challenge. Today, we're going to be exploring Google Scholar and how to claim your Google Scholar profile. So looking at my screen here, we're going to examine this together. If you do research online, you're probably familiar with Google Scholar. What it is is sort of a subset of the entire Google search index, where Google has used its little crawler robots to identify things that it thinks are scholarly literature. It hunts for PDFs that are structured like journal articles. It searches for bits of text that look like scholarly citations and metadata from the publisher embedded in a web page. There are a whole lot of things, and we don't know all of them, that Google uses to identify what it thinks is scholarly literature. It's different from something like Scopus or Web of Science in that there's no expert editors or curators assessing which publications are included, which journals show up, that side of the thing. It's all automated, so it's important to know that Google errs on the side of sort of sucking up everything it can rather than being selective about what's included. However, Google Scholar is out there. It's doing this work. It's looking for publications. It's trying to match these publications to authors. And by claiming your Scholar profile, you have a chance to take a little more ownership of that process, identify your own works, and be sure they're accurately representing you. So here's how you do it. You go to scholar.google.com. Then you'll want to be sure to sign in using your Clemson credentials. You can either do it up here in the upper right hand corner, or you can just go to my profile in the upper left. If you're not signed in, it's going to prompt you to log in. I've already claimed my profile, so it's a little different from what you're going to find on your first time. So I'm going to go back over to our research impact challenge guide. You've seen this before. We're on day two, claim your Google Scholar profile. And if you're doing this for the first time, you're going to encounter a form like this. It's going to prompt you to supply your name, your affiliation, and your email address. And these three fields are the only ones that you really need to do right away for now. You want to put your academic affiliation and you'll want to use your Clemson email address. Google Scholar will then send you a follow-up email to that address asking you to verify it. And that's going to give you a little extra credential in Google Scholar by saying you really are affiliated with Clemson. Once you go through that step, Google's going to give you a list of publications that it thinks were written by you. Depending on your name or your publication record, it may or may not do a good job, so make sure you take a quick look. If you're very prolific or if you have a common name, you might have a lot to sort through and choose or reject. If there's ones that don't belong to you, just click the box beside it and click delete. You can also merge records if Google has captured two records that go to the same thing. If you don't have any publications, this is the part that's frustrating. In order to proceed and claim your profile, you need to accept a publication that is not yours, go through this whole process, and then once your profile is set up, of course, delete that publication because it's not yours. This is not ideal, and I don't love recommending this path forward, but it is the only way that I've found so far that Google Scholar will allow you to go through and claim a profile without having any publications yet. So then you'll be given a couple of questions to answer. First, do you want Google Scholar to automatically add your publications if it finds them, or do you want it to have you review them first? This is totally up to you, and it may depend on how well Google did on that first pass trying to find your work. If Google did a pretty good job, you might be happy for them to continue to automatically assign publications to you. If, again, you have a very common name or you know there are others working in the same space as you and Google sort of didn't do a great job identifying your work, you may want to always review things and you can always change that later. Then finally, you want to choose if you want your profile to be public. In other words, if other folks who Google your name will find your Google Scholar profile and be able to click on your name throughout Google Scholar to see your whole list. The final thing I recommend you do here, and I'm going to jump back to my profile, is click this button here near the upper right. It says follow if you haven't already clicked it. Mine now says following. And this is the way that you can opt in to receive an email alert every time Google Scholar finds a new publication for you that it thinks was authored by you or a new citation of your work, which would be quite exciting to know about. Other things on this page, if you like, you can add a photo. You can also add areas of interest, which help sort of surface you in fields where you're working. And you can add co-authors that you've worked with. 
There are some statistics over here in the right hand corner that have to do with how Google Scholar has measured citations of your work or some other metrics having to do with how much work you have published and then how frequently those works have been cited. We'll get into these metrics later in the research impact challenge towards the end of our 10 activities. So stay tuned for more of that. But if you want to start investigating, you can click on any of these and read more. So that's really it. Your profile is now set up and will continue to auto-populate itself and you're all set to go. Enjoy, and we'll see you later for day three. Bye.